So, welcome everybody. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm gonna go around the table and introduce everyone. This is Julia from Toast PR, Sam from Custard, Anthony and Alex from NAR Agency, and myself, I'm Jordy, and this is Luke from Juke Media. So today we're gonna be hey. talking about the journey that you guys have had you from doing? inception okay. all the way to where you are now. How are you doing? Thank you, how are you? Good. Very well. My name is Julia Mitchell. I am the Managing Director of Toast PR, a company that I've been running now for 13 years. Lucky 13, I hope. Um, I'm also a mother. I have a little five-year-old girl called Audrey. I grew up not far from Manchester, actually, on a farm in a place called Rochdale on the Pennines. So I'm a farmer's daughter, which is strange now considering I'm like a PR girl. <laughs> did a business degree and then I went to Boots the Chemist doing marketing for them and buying roles and then ended up in PR so I've kind of been doing PR now for oh God, 16, 17 years and then I started Toast 13 years ago, my own agency. My name's Alex, I'm the CEO at Noir Agency. I'm Anthony and I'm the CEO of Noir Agency. I uh, was born here in Manchester but I moved down to Cornwall, to Newquay in Cornwall uh, when I was two or three years old. Uh, I was also born in Manchester. I left when I was about two. My family moved to Lincolnshire. And when I was about 20 and I moved back to Manchester, I ended up meeting the guys who were starting a company called Social Chain here in Manchester and they were looking for people to join their kind of founding team. Ended up working there as an account manager for almost 18 months I think in total. When I was about 22, I'd been like DJing, running like club nights, wasn't quite sure what direction I wanted to go in, so I decided let's go and see what's going on in Manchester. When I moved here first, I started a fashion magazine called La Vida. I started with two friends, so great experience, had no idea what I was doing though, so learned like pretty much all the things you do wrong in business, we did. After about, it was about two and a half years I left that, and then after that I went and got headhunted for a new startup called prettylittlething.com. There was only four of us, we were in a tiny little office on Dale Street, but it was like best experience of my life. Learned everything, you know, it was real kind of raw startup, very similar to like your experience at yeah, Social Chain. Yeah. Stayed there for probably about two years, company grew massive, to, I think it was like 150 by the time I left. It was at that point actually I met Anthony through the CEO of Social Chain, Steve, we all kind of became friends and we'd often go out here in Manchester and it was, it was Steve who, who kind of introduced myself and Anthony before before we started. And we decided to set up Noir, so that sort of brings us to today, doesn't it? Yeah, so uh, my name's Sam Alcock uh, and I'm Managing Director of a company called Custard Online Marketing Limited. I'm from South Manchester, went to Parswood High School, grew up around Didsbury. I've had quite a lot of jobs, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, so I actually started working at the, the Catholic newspaper first. Yeah. And then I went to go and work for uh, Halifax Estate Agents. I then went to go and work in New Zealand for a year, doing door-to-door -door sales and cold calling. I then went from New Zealand to come back home and I started work for a really good company called the National Computer Centre in Manchester. It was just a very interesting time to join there because it was like a start-up because it went from the government-run organisation into a, a, you know, a limited company really. And I joined at that point where it was quite new, it was quite, quite raw and there was only six of us when I, when I joined. In three years there was, there was about 75 people in the sales team. The actual company, I think there was 300 people in the company. It was that that sort of like gave me the, the appetite and the experience to set up my own business. Do you think there's a commonality between people that start their own business? Yeah, I think it, it depends on the person. But normally most entrepreneurs I've met, we all have a lot of things in common. What would you say one of those things are? The first one probably is that they just can't work for other people. <laughs> it's normally how it starts. Um, and then just this kind of feeling like you should or you could be doing more. When did you decide to start your own business? I think I always had it in me that I wanted to do it. I found working in the corporate world a little stifling at times. I just wanted to take control of my own destiny and my own time. And I like to see what I've done directly, almost, and have control over that trajectory. You know, you can sit in a corporate environment and you can think, hang on, no, don't do that, do this. The locus of control that you have as an employee is limited. When you can use your own persuasive skills with a client and they listen, and then they do it your way and it works. There's nothing more empowering. It's fantastic. And then you see the results of your work as well. I mean, I remember our initial conversation. I said, why do you want to start a business? His reasons weren't like, oh, I want to have loads of money and I want to be this kind of guy. It was, 
I really want to do something that I actually care about. I want to like leave and make a mark on the world. And also it was like your mum, wasn't it? It was like, I want to do something so I can like look after my mum and, and pay for a house and give her like the kind of future that she wants. So for me, I was like, you know, this is the, the right person that I want to go into business with. As we worked together, like it was just we so obvious. We had a lot of skills, skills. Didn't we, that complemented each other yeah. as well, I think. And it, it just all seemed to connect and good, good timing and everything else. So it all just seemed to be like almost meant to be for us, I think. I used to buy and sell websites and I used to buy them when they, when someone had basically just built a website. I used to pick that website up at that point. I used to get it higher up in Google. I used to get more traffic to that website. And then I used to flip that website. That process that led uh, me into getting more inquiries. Once I started building up a little bit of freelance work, a little bit of work on the side, I spent one year learning about online marketing. And it was an opportunity that Everything was just at the right time, at the right place, and basically that was when I set up Custard. Yeah, we thought we were going to be club videographers yeah. until we did club videography. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no was that the plan? That was the original plan. It was never meant to be a business. Yeah. We were just friends at uni and we did film and TV production. I don't think we really properly decided it was going to be a business business in the same way like everyone's a business. Probably like a year ago, yeah. year and a half ago. And that's when we really started to put all of our life in it, as I'm sure you all know. Did you ever imagine you were going to run your own business? My grandfather was an entrepreneur. We were a big family, but I think I'm one of the only ones in the family that started a business, but I was always really inspired by the fact that he was a bit of a hustler. He kind of had his own thing going on. I always knew I wanted to work for myself. I didn't know what doing. When I was younger as well, a lot of like friends and other family members would always say things like that. Like, oh, you know, you'll do your own thing. And I didn't quite understand what they were talking about. I didn't, I definitely didn't. I wasn't really exposed to it at all. When I was trying to figure out what job I wanted to do and what, in, what industry and this and that, the reason I could never find it was because it didn't exist. It, it always had to be something that I did myself. But at that point, it was, it was that was it. It was, it was always going to be that. You know, I didn't leave school thinking that I was going to set up my own business. I didn't have that burning desire to set up my own business. It just happened. I was good at it. If you've got a talent for something and you can pursue it and you can pursue it on your terms, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you start your own business? Don't be afraid, just do it. And how did it feel when you took that plunge? Amazing, yeah. 